Hi, I'm Neil Saban. I'm the head of open banking at Axway, also known as Mr. Open Banking, from my podcast of the same name. All the solutions here have something in common. They're all powered by APIs, but there's a problem. These APIs are proprietary, so when you need to do essential things, like get a bunch of bank accounts from a bunch of banks, you're using something like a Plaid or an MX. When you need to initiate a payment, you're using something like a, a Venmo or a Zelle. Open Banking says we can do better. Open Banking says let's establish common, open, shared standards for the secure exchange of financial data. This idea that really took hold in Europe has spread all over the world to the UK, Australia, the Middle East, Africa, South America, and yes, now North America, where the FDX standard shares over 28 million customer records, more than any other open banking standard in the world in the absence of any regulation. Axway thinks open banking is the future, so we built a solution to help banks embrace it, a solution that we simply call Axway Open Banking. Axway Open Banking gives you everything you need to succeed at open banking, starting with a strong developer portal, enterprise-grade API management, full consent management, analytics and reporting, all powered by the Amplify platform that lets you take your internal integration assets and bind them to that external open banking edge. I'm going to be focusing on the developer portal, which is the face your bank is showing to developers trying to attract them to use your APIs and adopt your platform. As you, can say, as you can see, rather, it's clear and clean. It's easy for developers to find what they're looking for and get productive. But the secret sauce is really the APIs. Out of the box with our solution, you get a complete set of APIs implemented in a full stack based on whatever standard is dominant within your region. These are not mock-ups. They're not servlets. They're not something Axway wrote. These are fully certified open banking APIs based on the Brazilian specification with all the token exchanges, OIDC, and consent redirects baked into the APIs. But it's not enough to just show you the APIs. You have to also show developers what it's going to be like to use those APIs. Now, all portals have a section like this that is sort of like the art of the possible, right? And it's intended to show developers what the experience is going to be like. But usually, you see something like this with a phone. It's usually fake. It's a screen recording or a video or something. We want it to do better. So what you're about to see is it's crystal clear. We've got Antonio Oliveira. He's logged into a PFM app called Moneypenny. He's got a couple of accounts. What we're going to do is add an account using open banking APIs. Let's go ahead and start. So Antonio, the first thing he has to do is select which bank holds the accounts that he wants to share. So he's going to pick Griffin Bank from the list. And what you're going to see then is an open banking redirect. Note that no credentials were shared with Moneypenny, right? That's against open banking. We're getting rid of screen scraping. So when this redirect triggers, you're going to see control pass from Moneypenny, the FinTech app, over to Griffin Bank using open banking APIs, no aggregators. Now we're over at the bank. Antonio is going to go ahead and sign in to Griffin Bank, and he's going to see the two accounts that he holds with Griffin Bank. He's going to agree or consent to share that data with the FinTech app, at which point he's going to get redirected back to Moneypenny, and you're going to see the uh, accounts balances and transactions load up in Moneypenny. Now, every time that little purple circle turns, that's a real open banking certified open banking API call. That's why it takes a couple of minutes. So not only the APIs, but we show developers how they're going to look. Pretty cool. But you might be thinking, you know, that's fake. Come on, that's canned. Well, when you hit this magic button, you're going to see that our little demo app, it's a taste of the consumer side of our platform, is actually connected to just about every bank in Europe, over 100 different sandboxes, across seven different European open banking standards. And of course, we're adding FDX. Now, you might be thinking, OK, fine, you convinced me. That's real open banking. But is it really easy for me as a developer to get productive using those APIs? Well, I want to show you how easy that actually is and get productive the way a real developer would. I'm going to go straight at that accounts API that the demo called. And yeah, I could call it from a browser. But all you developers out there know that's not how you work, right? You actually work in IDEs. So I'm going to download the Postman collection. I'm going to download the Postman environment and get productive the way a real developer would. It's as easy as saying, file, import. Here are the uh, two files I downloaded, the environment and the collection. I hit import, and now I'm ready to get productive inside Postman. I select the environment that I downloaded. I go to the collection. And here you'll see that we made this part very easy for developers, too. We simply numbered the steps. You don't have to read documentation. You just follow the numbers. I'm going to set up the environment variables, initiate the client credential grant flow, Post the consent to get back my list of grants. And this is as per the FAPI security profile. Again, that's fully baked into the API. Now I'm ready to get my JWE token. And of course, this makes it very easy to incorporate into your own code. 
and now I'm ready to get my login URL. Now, 10 points to anybody who can guess what's going to happen when I post this login redirect URL into a browser. You're going to get exactly the same authorization flow that you saw triggered when I called it from the demo app. That's because I wasn't kidding when I said all the security stuff is baked into the APIs themselves. It doesn't matter where you're calling them from. You're going to trigger this behavior. So I see the two accounts. I'm going to agree to share them. And now I'm going to be authorized. And I'm going to get back a consent a code that acts as the next input into my Postman flow. So now I can go back to Postman, move on to step five, paste the code into my body, and get back my token. Now that I have my SSL token, I'm ready to call resources, like accounts, two accounts I agree to share, and uh, transactions. Right? And again, these are real open banking API calls, and that's why it's taken a little while. But I just called accounts and transactions in another bank without any aggregator in the middle. No hubs, direct bank-to-bank -bank call using open standards that nobody paid for. Uh, now you might be thinking, well, that's all well and good for the Brazilian standards, but what about the US where FDX has been adopted? I'm very proud to share with you for the first time, really anywhere, a full implementation of the FDX 5.0 spec with FAPI and consent redirects baked right in. Let's go. So I set up my environment variables. FAPI, excuse me, FDX uses a push authorization requests. So here's my login redirect. I'm going to put that in a browser. And what you're going to see is exactly the same kind of authorization flow triggered by an FDX API, just like you got with a Brazilian spec. Antonio's going to go ahead and sign in. We've got 10 seconds left. He's going to agree to share. He's going to pick the accounts that he wants to share. He's going to get this uh, consent code. This is always the slowest part. Sorry, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I got my consent code, and I'm going to my token, and I'm going to my body, and uh, paste the code in here. Because again, I want to stress, this is an industry first, first, folks. We released press about this. We released press earlier this week, and now I'm calling resources based on FDX APIs, consent redirects, and industry first for Maxway here on the Finnovate stage.